Come on, Sai. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Some fun. Morning guys. Very, very cold today. So there you see Zion now we're just having a little fun in the morning like we always do. Um, if you remember what he was like when he first got here, there was a lot of resistance, no, no desire to be with me at all. So someone asked a good question and I'll talk about this a little bit right now and I never talk very sciencey when it comes to dog training. Sorry if I'm talking funny, my lips are like frozen. Someone else asked about the process of Zion learning or diesel learning and, and all the dogs, how they learn. What you're seeing with Zion, like with every dog I work with, is I utilize all four quadrants of operant conditioning. I can't believe I'm talking about this right now because I don't talk about sciencey stuff. This will be the most sciencey you ever hear me. But let's go over that real quick. And I'll give you examples of everything you've seen with him from the first video I did with Zion or the first video I did with Diesel or any of the other dogs where you saw a lot of the work, okay? I spend most of my time when I'm training these dogs with positive reinforcement, right? That's where I'm putting all the meat and potatoes. Everything I teach the dog I'm using a lot of positive reinforcement, marking and rewarding behaviors that I desire. So they happen over and over and over again and the dog learns, positive reinforcement. I ask the dog to do something, he does it, I mark it, I reward. That's positive reinforcement, right? The very first thing you guys saw me do with Zion was negative reinforcement. Now, a lot of people, they hear the word negative, they think it's something bad. And this is where a lot of the confusion comes from, from the average dog owner population. So you guys saw negative reinforcement, which is very, very effective right from the start. What do I mean by that? The first thing you saw me do with Zion was put him on a leash and he wanted to just keep going away from me, right? Walking away from me. And I didn't allow him. I would apply leash pressure, pulling him back toward me and the second he would give in and come to me, I would release that leash pressure. That's negative reinforcement. And many times that's followed up with positive reinforcement, marking and rewarding, because that's where I'm spending most of my time, right? But a few examples that you have seen of negative reinforcement with Zion. The leash pressure, he turns and gives into it, it goes away, negative reinforcement. We started doing the e-collar work, right? I press the continuous button, he feels the e-collar pressure, I apply leash pressure with that, he turns and comes to me, that pressure goes away. Negative reinforcement. Again, almost always followed up by positive reinforcement. Another thing, another example you guys saw of negative reinforcement, once we started utilizing the toys, he doesn't know how to out, I grab him by the flat buckle collar and lift up a little bit, applying pressure, he spits out the ball, negative reinforcement again i follow up with positive reinforcement okay now where people really get confused is positive punishment and negative punishment negative punishment again nothing bad i'm working on zion's obedience asking him to place down come all these little things that you saw me just doing now and he's not getting it right i have the food or the toy as a reward while i withhold that reward Okay, I'm removing the reward. That's negative punishment, all right? I ask him for a down and he's not giving it to me and I just say, uh-uh. That's my, my marker word for no, that's the wrong choice. And he's not getting that reward. That's negative punishment. The second he gets it right, I mark it reward. Again, 
positive reinforcement. That's where we spend most of our time. Now, positive punishment. A lot of people are very anti-punishment in dog training, right? Because it sounds bad. So the average dog owner who doesn't know any better, when they see a, a dog trainer that says, oh, I only use positive reinforcement, I don't use punishment. Well, that sounds great, right? It makes you feel good. You don't want to punish your dog. Well, it's very false and it's not factual and it's not productive. And to be truly productive, you have to use all four quadrants of dog training. So what do I mean by positive punishment? Positive just means adding adding punishment. Now when people think punishment, a lot of people think, ooh, bad, causing harm to the dog. Not even close. So I've used positive punishment, I believe, in two different ways with Zion. You guys have seen them both. Let me explain to you. Zion's on the leash and he gets playful and he wants to have a good time and he grabs the leash with his mouth and he starts shaking because he wants to play. I say no. I give him a little leash pop. That's positive punishment. I'm adding punishment. I'm giving him that little leash pop after I say no to stop him from messing with the leash. That's punishment, right? Is that harmful to the dog? No, not at all. It's very beneficial because he learns, oh, he doesn't like when I do that and he stops doing it. The other way I added positive punishment, again, he's a happy-go-lucky dog, but one of the issues he has with his family is he likes to jump on people because he gets excited. So Zion jumps up on me, I say no, and I push him off. I use my knee, I push him off, I move into him, I push him off. After I say no, that's punishment, positive punishment, okay? But again, the majority of where I spend my time with these dogs is positive reinforcement. I'm teaching everything through positive reinforcement. But to be truly successful and to get real results and to get the dog looking like you see right now, you see him, he's happy, go look. Actually, he has really bad diarrhea this morning. I'm not sure why that's the first time. So he's not even feeling 100% but you still see that interaction with me, that happy-go-lucky, just wanting to work with me because we're a team, okay? There's no e-collar on him, there's no prong collar, there's no leash on him, we're a team. So I utilize all four of those quadrants for the best possible results, and you see what the dog looks like. Could you achieve that by only using one or two quadrants? No, you really can't, and you'll never get the reliability and it's going to take a lot longer. Now, with that being said, yes, it's important to use those four quadrants of learning, but there's also a couple more variables that for me are extremely important for those true everlasting real results to where he's going to continue getting better down the road. And I talk about it all the time. One, I have to have a relationship with this dog, okay? That doesn't mean he has to love me. He's going to love me, most likely. Most dogs will. But it doesn't mean he has to love me. But we have to have a mutual trust and respect of each other. That's what I mean by relationship. Because we want to be a team. I have to be a team with this dog or any dog I work with. And in order to be a team, you're going to have a relationship. Again, he doesn't have to love me, but most likely they're going to. But we have to have that mutual trust and respect. And then the last element the most important element, as far as I'm concerned, is I have to have that ability to pass on enough information, enough education, and enough knowledge to the owners so he can continue to progress and get better and better and better. Because if I can't pass that along to the owners, then everything I do is temporary and useless, okay? <laughs> He's over there playing with the ball. Love this dog. So that's the most sciency you'll ever hear me get about dog training. You'll never hear me talk about quadrants, but I did it that one time because someone had a very good question and they were honestly confused. So I hope this helps a little bit. Truly, truly, truly beneficial to utilize all four quadrants. Have a relationship that's based on teamwork and trust and respect and pass the knowledge off to the owners and it's almost impossible to fail, guys. Almost impossible to fail, much easier to succeed. So I hope this answers your question. Again, thank you for all the support, and thank you to every single person in the dog world that's doing good by these phenomenal animals. Peace.